work will be is collaborating with Anna from Ukraine, uh, a panel of science. Some of more now currently in South Korean uh, Women University in South Korea. Uh, I'm a postdoc with uh, subject at the National Lab. So my topic today will be uh, emergence of carbon studies and chemistry and bulk electricity at nanoscale. So I will give a brief introduction of this uh, mixed state, followed by thermal dynamic analysis, uh, phase two simulation, and uh, experimental demonstration of this uh, mixed state. I will summarize my talk uh, briefly afterwards. So, uh, yeah, most of us know that uh, the biological discontinuity at the surface will create a depolarization field that gives effective charge screening. Understanding this behavior has uh, incentive uh, extensive studies on the screening mechanisms. Uh, electronic screening from top electrode has been well understood. And recently, uh, the, uh, even in absence of an electrode, uh, the surface charge from the chemical environment could also uh, effectively screen the charge. And this work has been uh, recently uh, modeled by uh, people from Argonne National Lab, which uh, is an SH model. Unfortunately, the priority service is still less understood uh, from the thermodynamic or theoretical point of view. Uh, the boundary conditions of the equations are EO defined. For example, we usually define the, uh, assume that polarization charge are fully screened on the surface and basically define the electrical potential on the surface uh, equal to the applied, applied voltage. Well, these uh, boundary conditions well uh, describe the behavior in bulk materials interfaces. However, at uh, lower dimension, optical films where the energy of the surface charge is comparable to the bulk power electricity, uh, this uh, this uh, this boundary condition as well is not appropriate to model this uh, behavior. On the other hand, from the experimental perspective, there are more uncertainties uh, exist. Uh, for example, recently people claim power electricity based on the formation of relevant point states, local series loop, and pressure induced solution. A typical example is by people from Nebraska. They observed a, uh, a mechanical tip induced uh, behavior and attributed this to the ferro electric solution. However, <coughs> these behaviors can also be found in the non classic ferro electrics. And for example, in STO material, we also observe the uh, typical local hysteresis loops uh, on STO samples. So the question is how we can differentiate the ferro electricity? or is it a pure service charge behavior? That comes to the motivation of our work, how to differentiate this behavior, or what is the nature of this phenomenon in objects in films? Uh, questions arise such as, whether are these materials ferroelectric or polar non ferroelectric or simply non-polar materials? And how we can quantify or define the relative boundary condition for ferroelectric service? And are the PFM measure, uh, measurements pure service charge behavior or bulk electromechanical activity. To address these concerns, I, in this work, we use a thermodynamic analysis to determine this mixed chemical and electric state. We modify the boundary conditions based on the electrochemical equilibrium to modify the phase fuel simulation to address these concerns. And finally, we use a, a KPF method experimentally to demonstrate this, the existence of this uh, service charge coupled with the bulk fuel electricity state. And what we find is that the bulk fuel electricity and surface electrochemistry are not, in, are not separable. In other words, the, uh, they both exist and causes a mixed electrochemical fuel electricity state in outer thin from fuel electric materials. So I'll, I'll move on to the first topic of thermodynamic considerations. Uh, uh, this work is laid down by Anna. And uh, we use a uh, ferroelectric equation of state to describe the polarization. And for the surface charge uh, on the top of the film in this layer, uh, we use a uh, aesthetic, uh, we use a uh, Gaussian model here. Uh, so the surface charge defined as a function of the charge concentration. And this it should be mentioned here the surface ions we uh, consider it to be oxygen ions in this study. However, the model itself can be extended to more general electrochemical process without loss of the generality. And the nearest two effects are coupled through the Poisson equation, both inside the film and uh, inside, inside the gap area. Parameters used in the simulation are listed here. 
So we first uh, study the thickness dependence of the pressure of the hydropressure polarization and temperature of phase type 1. Typically, we choose three uh, thickness, three nanometers, which is uh, which we only find a stabilized polarization in the negative, uh, negative values. In other words, the existence of surface charge could kill the polarization in the positive values and only stabilize the negative polarization. And if we plot a different oxygen partial pressure along these lines and put it here, we clearly see there's uh, two solutions for each temperature at a given oxygen partial pressure. One of the <coughs> solutions is, is, is instable and the only one with the values uh, relative to the spontaneous polarization is, is stable. So clearly here we only find a mixed ferroelectric state and non ferroelectric state. <coughs> here, when there's no solution, we can find it a non ferroelectric state with only one solution uh, ascribed it to the mixed ferroelectric and chemical state. When the film thickness is equal to 30 nanometers, based on the calculation of the uh, equation state we, uh, we described, we find a clear three distinct, re distinct regions, ferroelectric, mixed ferroelectric, and non ferroelectric state, based on the solutions of these, uh, uh, these diagrams at a given temperature and oxygen partial pressure. If we further increase the thickness to 300 nanometer, which usually is a pretty thick film, uh, the mixed ferroelectric state almost disappears. And clearly, there is only a non solution or only two solutions. Uh, uh, separating the ferroelectric and non ferroelectric state. So, uh, from this uh, calculation, we can de determine uh, at a given thickness which what, what states will disappear and what states exist in the, based on the thermodynamic calculation. And if we plot all of them into a phase diagram, temperature thickness, film thickness dependence of this uh, uh, diagram, we clearly see a boundary separating three different states. Clearly, the non ferroelectric state and the is usually ascribed to uh, films, much thinner films at elevated temperatures. Ferroelectric state usually is stable at thicker film, lower temperatures. Mixed ferroelectric state will be, well, in between these two states, uh, when film thickness is larger than a critical one. We also see that when the oxygen partial increases, the boundaries separating the non-ferroelectric and ferro uh, mixed ferroelectric state will, will have a dependence of oxygen partial, uh, oxygen partial pressure. The boundaries between the mixed ferroelectric and ferroelectric state has less dependence on oxygen partial pressure. Uh, I should, uh, so, uh, using the thermodynamic analysis, we quantify the, the existence of this mixed ferroelectric state. Next, we move on to the phase field model of uh, incorporating the realistic chemical boundary conditions to study the chemical control of the polarization stability. Uh, phase field model has been uh, has shown its capability to model the ferroelectric behaviors in the past 15 years. Uh, basically, based on the uh, London Kingsburg dimensional equations to solve the polarization as the order parameter to describe the structure. And this polarization uh, determines the local function, uh, free energy functionality of the system, and the evolution of the polarization simply describes the metal structure. Uh, in a typical conventional uh, phase field model, we use fixed electrical potential and fully screened for uh, polarization bond conditions to describe the uh, electrostatic bond conditions and polarization con um, conditions. These pretty well describe the uh, uh, bulk material and uh, comparatively thick thin films, but has some problems when the film is reduced to ultra thin film thickness. Uh, to avoid this, uh, to to better modify the model, uh, in this work actually I. Uh, modify the chemical body conditions by using the uh, uh, by determining the polarization charge and the electrical potential based on the uh, chemical reaction in the surface layer. Uh, in the surface layer, also we incorporate both the ferroelectric bulk film and the dielectric layer in the models. It should be mentioned that here, for simplicity, we consider the surface ions to be oxide ions, either positive oxygen matrices or the negative surface ions. However, this model can be extended to more generality, consider uh, different scenarios of electrochemical reaction on top of the film surface. So we solved a couple of Poisson and LG equations using the uh, chemical equilibrium based on the SHG model to determine the surface charge by solving these equations, a uh, uh, couple of equations together. We can model, uh, we can dis uh, determine the effect of the chemical bond conditions and surface charge. Uh, layer on the of electricity. Um, 
for we start we start with a zero zero one pro, uh, prototype of PDT material uh, without a hot electrode, but with the uh, existence of service charge uh, that when a polarization is pointing upwards, it creates a positive polarizing charge which attract attract negative service charge for partial compensation. And we plot the electrical potential and polarization evolution as a function of a, of a thin film thickness. This is, a, uh, this is the surface layer and this is the bulk electricity. We find that uh, uh, the electrical potential is not linear. Actually, there is a maximum value at the interface between the film and the uh, surface layers. And this electrical potential created a negative field suppressing the polarization in the film. And when the uh, uh, when external environments reach a critical value, polarization switching occurs. Uh, similarly, we consider the other way, uh, the other way around, when polarization is pointing downward, creating a negative polarization charge, partially compensated by the positive optimum latency surface charge, and this creates a negative, uh, uh, the positive electrical field, and at a critical value to switch back switching the polarization into the positive value. So here we show a, a switchable, polari uh, switchable polarization uh, control by controlling the effective uh, uh, chemical environment on top of the film. So we further do a uh, phase two simulation considering the temperature dependence of the switching behavior by controlling the oxygen partial pressure. This is reminiscent of a typical PE loop of a single domain power materials when polarized here, the larger oxygen partial pressure stable than positive polarization, and smaller oxygen partial pressure will stable than negative polarization. And we we'll also see a dependence of this uh, remnant polarization and this reasonable area when the temperature increases, indicating that at high temperature, electricity is suppressed. And we draw the boundaries between the several, uh, the key minus and key stable states which only has one polarization solution uh, in this, uh, in this uh, plot. And in between these two states, there's a metastable or intermediate state when both polarization in upward and downward state can be stabilized. Our work actually uh, uh, agree with a, with a recent uh, experimental report using synchrotron X-ray scattering of video. Uh, we here show the Bragg peak which is the position of the black peak is related to the lattice parameter of the C-axis and it's also related to the magnitude of the polarization, pure polarization. We find that depending on whether the uh, oxygen partial pressure is decreasing from a higher value or increasing from a lower value, the position and the intensity of black peak is uh, dependent on this, uh, on, this, uh, on this route. So when we plot the peak position Peak intensity and the function of oxygen partial pressure, we get a hysteresis behavior, which is uh, which is uh, which is typically seen in the electric materials. Uh, experimentally and theoretically, we combined we find a effective way to control the polarization function during the chemical environment in this uh, in this model. And you might ask. So this ionic screening, what's the difference between electronic full screening? To do this, we actually compare the two, uh, two cases where the polarization charge can be fully screened by the electro electronic carriers from the back or partially screened by ionic, uh, ionic charge. Um, in this case, full electron uh, <coughs> this behaves like a single domain behavior. Polarization uniform in the, in the system um, suppressed uniformly uh, when increasing the applied bias. And the electrical potential is linearly uh, from top to lower uh, uh, layer. Uh, in the service charge uh, 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 screening case, uh, it is quite different. Sorry. Uh, we find that the polarization remains uniform in the film, diminished in the, in the service charge layer. This created a nonlinear dependence of the polar, uh, electrical potential on the film thick, on, on the thickness. And uh, the maximum electrical potential here is enhanced as, uh, compared to the electrical, electronic screen. And this creates a negative electrical field even at zero bias. And this strongly destabilizes the polarization due to in, 
in a large binary screen. And we find that the solution bias is even smaller compared to the electronic screening case. And if we plot uh, the, uh, the special bias for solution uh, as, a different, as a function of film thickness for two cases, we find that there's uh, uh, the service charge uh, partial composition can effectively decrease the solution, means that it destabilizes the electricity in the film. And when we extrapolate this red line to the x-axis of the film thickness, we find that at critical thickness around 1.5 nanometer, uh, even uh, the ferro electricity will no longer be stable. Means the equalization charge due to the impartial composition will kill the ferro electricity. So we show the thermodynamic calculation of this behavior. We modified chemical bonding conditions and effectively studied this uh, effect on solution using phase two simulation. And finally, we want to experimentally <coughs> demonstrate this mixed uh, state. Uh, to do that, we choose a barren titanate outer thing with several modern layers uh, on STOSI substrate uh, without the bottom electrode. And this material shows weak ferro electricity, which is ideal for the study in this, uh, in this, uh, in this study. So we see open case loop of a typical ferro electricity shape. Uh, we also find when the modern layer decreases, the remnant polarization, positive remnant polarization is decreased, while the negative uh, remnant polarization is constant. Uh, PFM images of this material show amplitude dependence of the, uh, of the pol on the polarization, when a thicker film uh, is almost a response, amplitude response, same for all P up and P down cases. Lower uh, thinner films will have a larger uh, remnant, uh, sorry, the polarization response going up compared to the uh, compared to the uh, P down case. We also study the relaxation of the polarization in the PFM images. We find uh, the uh, up polarization relaxes much slower compared to the uh, P down case. And at thinner, at when the film is becoming thinner, the relaxation is even faster. All this work indicates that the ferroelectricity is contributed mainly from the barren titanate layer in this material. Material. However, as I mentioned, the, in the conventional PFM, we cannot unambiguously indicate ferro electricity simply from the hysteresis loop or the main writing because the tip sample electrostatic interaction, ionic mechanism, and so on, will also create such similar behavior. In other words, classic PFM loop is actually a superposition of the surface electrochemistry and bulk ferro electricity. If these two effects for example, if the electricity is much larger than a surface charge electrochemistry, which is always the case in thicker film, PFM signal can basically modify the electricity in the material. In ultra thin film, when these two effects are comparable, we can hardly differentiate this basically from PFM uh, signal. To solve these uh, problems, we use a compact carbon probe for some process in PFM. Uh, I will not uh, go into details about this method. If you are interested, you can go to this reference for more details. Basically, in the V-read uh, signals, they have multiple circles of DC voltage. Instead of the conventional PFM, which only have V-read equal to zero volts, here we have V-read from, 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 for example, from plus two volts to minus two volts. This gives us a spectrum of PFM signals from a third perspective. Uh, from other dimensions to distinguish ferro electricity from charge inversion and electrostatic force. I'll show you here in the tip, uh, in the tip, uh, in the, in this method. Here's the PFM signal, which I just showed before. PFM signal for <coughs> STOSI, which is uh, typically nonlinear if STO is not highly strained, it's non ferro electric. KPM signals is almost linear, dependent on the VUV, the basic read voltage. And then we can harness the offset of polarization at the zero volt uh, V read. When the thickness of the mono, of the uh, barren titanate mono layer increases from four mono layer to ten mono layer, we see clearly nonlinear behavior. In other words, this, for example, this ten mo uh, mono layer, this KPM signal is actually a superposition of the linear response with the with the like, like 
behavior. And clearly, at zero volt period, there is an offset of, uh, of the KPM signals indicating existence of barrel electricity. And this barrel electricity is even enhanced when the film thickness increases. So, <clears throat> with that, we can, we can say that KPFM offered a third dimension, another perspective, to effectively quantify barrel electricity from pure surface charge uh, effect, which are not easily differentiated in classic, KP, uh, classic KFM methods. Uh, I will show one more slide uh, here in the animation, actually. So this is a uh, top scene. Top scenes. Uh, we have one slide. Sorry, we have one slide contributing from with our with my uh, colleague. Kind of like second ion mass spectro uh, spectroscopy spectrometry. This method actually we use ion gun to bombard the target, create a uh, create a uh, which will bombard uh, ion chemical ions on the on, on the material and will be detected by this uh, by this device. What we do actually actually is to combine this top scene method with the uh, AFM atomic uh, force microscopy in the same ankle chamber. So we can instinctually uh, correlate the functional and chemical investigations. Uh, uh, a simple example shows that uh, when we use AFM to switch to, uh, to, uh, to uh, detect the surface of the film, we see a strong local polarization switch in the vehicle and the chemical, uh, chemical, uh, inform chemical information from the top themes is uh, strongly uh, can show a strong correlation and interaction with chemical elements and PFM signal. So I'll give a brief summary of my talk. We developed a combined theoretical method, thermal analysis and phase two simulation together with the KPM method to study the emergence of a mixed natural chemical biology state. An ionic surface charge coupled with bulk electricity gave rise to this state based on thermal dynamic calculations. And phase two simulations with more realistic chemical body conditions will verify the reversible polarization simply by controlling the chemical environment. KPFM will be an effective way to differentiate this barrel electricity and uh, surface charge behaviors. I would like to say that this method uh, will offer us a systematic modif modification of the barrel properties, such as gate control, new solid ionic conductor here. For example, we can um, fine tune the, uh, the, uh, the, 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 uh, the uh, transition region from biologic uh, mixed state and non biologic state, which gave us a more precise control of the gate, gate control. Uh, before I uh, end my talk, I would like to say that this work has been partially supported by CNS, which is uh, a local national lab, by uh, DOE uh, user facilities, and uh, uh, we are working with uh, proposals uh, each year. And if you have the interest, uh, you're more than welcome to, to talk with us uh, after my talk. With that said, I will stop and thank you for your attention. Thinking, combining chemistry and polarization, mm -hmm. even go beyond what we've 